Good evening everybody and welcome to tonight's uh, Infrastructure Safety and Growth Scrutiny Committee. Um, item one are apologies for absence. I have apologies from Councillor Paul Thompson and Councillor Dan Maycock. Are there any other apologies? No. Okay. Um, item two are the minutes of the previous meeting, which was the 18th of January of this year. Um, can I have a mover? John, thank you. And a second that. Roy, thank you. All those in favour? Excellent. Thank you very much. We'll sign those as a true record. Thank you, Jack. Um, item three are declarations of interest. Do we have any declarations of interest? No, oh, thank you. Item four is update from me. Um, so just to note, we do have a new member, uh, Council Paul Thompson. Unfortunately, can't be here tonight, um, but I'm sure he'll do some good work in the, in the future. Um, other item is that um, we're having an additional meeting on the 5th of April. Um, to, to discuss um, the Castle Grounds Festival um, and we'll do some work plan and um, look at the draft screening report for the year. I don't think there's anything else from me on that. Any comments? Sheree. Yeah, thanks Chair. Um, I've had to give my apologies for the additional meeting. Uh, so this is my last meeting. Oh. Well, on that note, Sheree, thank you very much, as we won't see you for the, for the, for the last meeting of the, of the year. Thank you very much for your contribution throughout this year. And uh, I think it's been, it's been great having you. And I think you've been a, a big contributor. And um, I know you're going to be leaving, leaving the council as well at the end of this, uh, this term. Um, and so, so good luck to retirement. Sort of. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, item five are responses to reports of the Infrastructure Safety and Growth, Growth Committee. So there's been no recommendations that we've taken to Cabinet since the last meeting. Um, item six is consideration of matters referred to Infrastructure Safety and Growth from Cabinet of Council. Um, there was a motion at full council on uh, water quality and, 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 and rivers, um, which I believe was referred to scrutiny. I think that's probably appropriate for the chairs to sort of get together and, and perhaps have a, a decision, sort of which scrutiny committee it, it sort of goes through and then up to that, those, those particular committees to see how they uh, address that. Um, so, so no, no decision really on that at the moment. Uh, and then we're, we're on to item seven, which is our first substantive um, item of the evening, which is the Tamworth Community Safety Partnership Plan 2023 to 26. And we, 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 haven't, we have uh, Joe Sands and, and, and obviously portfolio Oldham, uh, Martin Summers, and we've got Rob Neeson, Chief Inspector Rob Neeson. Yeah, that's the correct title. I think your predecessor at one of these meetings, I actually uh, demoted him by calling him in, in just Inspector. So, oh, that's why so, 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 <laughs> <laughs> so if, if I make that mistake again, I, I, I do apologise. Um, so I guess over to, to Martin to just quickly introduce, or, or Joe. Thank you. <coughs> I'm going to let the expert speak, Chair. <laughs> when I can find her, I'll... I'll... <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, thank you, uh, um, Chair. Um, the purpose of the report um, is to sort of uh, introduce to uh, the committee the updated Community Safety Partnership Plan for 2023-2026. Um, as the committee know, every uh, three years, a full Community Safety Strategic Assessment is undertaken um, funded through the Staffordshire Commissioner's Office and therefore we are we need to uh, look back at the last three years 
look at the new um, priorities if there are any or amended priorities and produce an outline plan for the for the for the pre for the next three years that three-year plan um, is due to be endorsed by cabinet following this meeting uh, with any other recommendations or thoughts from the infrastructure safety and growth committee and thereafter the plan will come annually just to the infrastructure safety and growth for for scrutiny and monitoring so there's three aspects to this report the first one is um, the con noting the content of report in the terms of progress made for the plan 2020-2023 uh, to consider the draft plan 23-26 providing any feedback and also to support endorsement um, members will note from the um, report that the priorities um, are largely unchanged so in alphabetical order antisocial behavior domestic abuse which includes um, stalking and harassment community cohesion um, drugs crime and related harm serious and public place violence which includes um, the uh, violence and abuse and intimidation of women and girls vehicle crime and vulnerable persons so we are working together we continue to work as a partnership um, we have in within the report day-to-day -day activity our weekly vulnerability meetings our weekly asb meetings daily update briefings uh, management of the high-risk domestic abuse cases through the marat conference oversight of related domestic homicide reviews <coughs> locality deal funding the community safety partnership is funded by the Staffordshire commissioner's office um, and attendance at other various meetings across across staffordshire uh, as a county approach to some of these priorities it's outlined there that the the um, partnership receives 61,394 pound per year from the Staffordshire commissioner's office within the report is a outlined spend plan um, and we will be delivered within our staffing resources so I think I can if, it, if there's any sort of questions and move this report to the committee gladly answer any questions on the appendices um, and, and obviously uh, the chief inspector is here to look if there's any questions specifically uh, for the police so thank you chair thanks Joe um, comments or questions from committee anything Sure. Uh, it's a comment really rather than a question, but uh, there seem to be some alarming rises in certain areas of crime, so particularly with car thefts and some violent crimes. And I just wondered if you had any comments on that and what perhaps you could uh, fill us in as to what the police are doing to, to counter those particular areas. Yeah, so vehicle crime is key. Uh, what I would do is I'd just look at the, the figures within the report uh, are based on 12 months compared to the previous 12 months. COVID have, a, uh, have had, had a massive effect on, on crime figures in Europe during that time. So if you, but if you go back to 20, um, 20, April, April 19 to March 2020, actually, although there is still an increase of, of 40%, 40 it's a much less increase than we've seen year on year. Uh, and that's the base figure that we'd probably use. Um, there is some, uh, it's an issue, not just at Tamworth, it's an issue across the borders, issue across the south of Staffordshire uh, that has resulted in Operation Bournemouth being started, which is a vehicle, uh, vehicle crime uh, group that link in with other forces and make sure that we're doing um, preventative work, but look at bringing um, offenders to justice. Uh, the success of that has seen, um, in the last three months, 60 individuals arrested, uh, many of those imprisoned, and we're seeing that downward turn coming now. So we're over the peak of it. The, the offending that's been, um, the charges have been put in place, and the remand applications that have gone along with those have seen that reduction come down. As well as that, locally, we've, we've got an identified single uh, SPOC, who, and she has built links across other forces, and we now do joint operations with Warwickshire, West Mids and uh, Central Motorway Policing Group to target um, th those sort of offences. And that sees us going over to Warwickshire and sees Warwickshire officers then replicating that in, in Tamworth and the south of the county to try and identify offenders more quickly, bring them to justice.
Sharon. Yes, thanks. I had a second question, if that's all right, Chair. Uh, this one's really for Jo. Um, Marac has been going for quite a long time now, and it seems to be a really successful enterprise and a really good way of bringing all the different agencies together. I noted that um, meetings have gone on to Zoom. Presumably that was a, um, a throwback, I suppose, from the pandemic. Has it improved attendance? Has it made it better? It's gone on to Microsoft Teams, which, which is uh, mainly our, our ability to influence and save people time from coming to that. So it hasn't had any negative impact at all. It's increased attendance and we get the relevant information that we've got, that's required through that. There's been some um, Staffordshire Police, you will know, has been through some change recently, and that will include in the next sort of 18 months changes to our uh, public protection unit which will then enhance the Marrick processes and, and bring better responsibility and better guidance around domestic abuse cases. Any other questions or comments? John. Hello. Yeah, it's uh, um, good evening. <laughs> and uh, It's nice to see you all. Um, in this report that um, uh, last year's, um, you noted that there was an increase in knife crime among school children. Um, I wonder if you could give us an update on that and uh, let us know if that's being addressed or if it's getting worse. And the secondary question, where are Tamworth's crime hotspots, if you like? Which are the areas that you're concentrating on mostly? Um, so I'll answer the second question first, because there's no real hotspots within Tamworth, is it? You could consider that the town centre would be the biggest hotspot, and that's in relation to, to violent crime, antisocial behaviour, uh, knife crime. And some of that is, is ge ge geographical in relation to that's the area where people go to to, to drink uh, and party. But also where people from outside of the area may come in uh, to commit other, other sorts of offences such as robbery. So it's more about the, the crime type that I'd concentrate on as opposed to the area. And the crime types that are the clear concern would be theft of motor vehicles, theft of motor vehicles, and those sorts of offences which would address the hot fullness. Uh, in relation to a knife crime, uh, that's a Staffordshire figure across across the board as opposed to, to just um, Tamworth. And I think um, uh, one of the things that we, we're trying to ensure that the, the fear of knife crime is far different to the reality of knife crime uh, and targeting of, of that. What we've done is, uh, and we're doing it with Warwickshire, so we're uh, teaming up with Warwickshire next week to deliver to Warwickshire schools across the border in relation to a process that we've gone through to high schools today, uh, up to date, um, where we, we use um, lived and experience of drug and knife crime individual that speaks about the effect of knife crime. Uh, we've given um, talks around knife crime. We, the, the other thing that we've done is working with the schools is going to the schools, take uh, drugs dogs into the schools, take um, metal detectors into the schools to show a presence along with making sure that the parents are aware. Uh, and I suppose the key piece of work we did was uh, in relation to linking in with our intelligence to say someone's carrying a knife, linking that into social media and then doing personal visits to the parents of the children that were being identified as carrying, carrying that. Um, and, and that went down really well. So can I say that young people don't carry knives? I definitely can't say that, can I? Um, but am I, I think that the fear of people carrying knives is far worse than reality. Uh, we're just about to get wands for every police car uh, within Tamworth, which will make it a bit easier for us, without searching people, because we obviously need, uh, need powers to do that, to be able to monitor people and maybe put a, a, a knife wand over people that might cause us some concern. So uh, that's the next steps is getting those. We also have the uh, ops, yeah, I remember the, name of the, the knife crime week of action that, that's due to uh, Scepter, that's the one. <laughs> Op Scepter uh, due to come in. Uh, we just purchased some, some knife bins for the voluntary surrender of knives as well to, to try and encourage people to take those weapons off the street. Thank you. <laughs> just to add to that yeah that i mean um the inspect chief inspectors in mentioned the, the the knife 
bins that is that's obviously a partnership funding that we've done and in, in relation to any hot spots that's precisely within the report why we have regular weekly meetings um, vulnerability meetings so we can look at hot spots so if we do then need to make remedial action different action in different places that's what we will do as a partnership um, you know, linking in with our housing teams and linking in with, with PCSOs and, and, and our other officers. So, yes, the police, that, that crime hotspot, is, a, is, is kind of where we would react if we found there was something that was reported, which is really the key to report um, and, and take action accordingly uh, to whatever agency is leading on that. I suppose just further to, to that is that, that we... The knife crime will increase the more stop searches we we do the more people we stop with drugs that, that carry knives um that that should be seen as a positive because that actually it means we take we're targeting the right people and we're taking the knives off those individuals that cause the most threat and risk to us so it's not necessarily 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 a negative that knife crime figures goes up it means we're catching people with knives because we're targeting the right individuals If I may, can you give us some sort of a figure on how many people you have discovered with uh, armed with knives to give us some sort of a... Because nationally, obviously, it's a, it's a big problem that's getting worse, or it <coughs> seems to be. Um, what's the situation here in Thomas? Can you give us some sort of an idea how many people or how many knives you've taken from kids? Oh, my head, unfortunately. It's something I can go away and, and have a look at. And what I can say is the the... The, the knives we've re recovered recently, so this week we've recovered recovered two knives off an individual that also happened to be have a substantial amount of uh, Class A drugs on them. So there's a, a direct link between the the use of drugs or the selling of drugs and that knife crime. Thank you. Uh, yeah, just a quick comment from me on the um, on on the drugs sort of uh, side of things. Um, I think potentially there's, there's people see or a lot more reports of, of, of drug crime in, in, in the town and sort of alluding to what you've just said about the, the, the more people you stop and search, the more drugs you, you probably find. Is, do you think that is the reason for, for an increase or is there not really an increase? No, I think that drugs, drug crime is really interesting, isn't it? Because I can make it sound. There is a, a drug problem no matter where you go in the country. Um, sometimes I feel that um, targeting of low-level dealers has its impact but doesn't really go far enough. The reality is that drug dealers don't come into to Tamworth uh, to not sell drugs. It's because there's a market there. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at our friends or brothers or associates that are using those drugs and try and discourage them from that usage because that then takes the ability to sell the drugs away, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's a difficult one to try and tackle though. Uh, any other questions, comments? Michelle? Thanks. Uh, yeah, part question, part comment. Um, so looking at some of the actual figures that are included within the report of the percentage of change, they're not actually very big figures. So kind of uh, partly going on to what kind of Councillor Harper was saying about kind of the numbers, when you look at the numbers in the report of like, knife crimes, in most wards, you're looking at under 20 maximum. <laughs> so it's not huge amounts when you think across and I'm assuming well, and again assumptions are dangerous but I would assume that a lot of them are probably the same people or, or similar groups of people that are probably partaking in those activities not always the same so you might want to yeah, similar, similar a lot of it is information based so um and a lot of it is related is related to the selling of drugs, but that's not to say that there aren't other people carrying knives. Uh, some of the work that we did with with the parents of the children that identified that was was I was asking them to look at their their children's rooms, making sure they haven't got stashed away hidden knives. Uh, but the parents responded really well, really well to it. Sometimes you get the the, the comment that 
well, he's carrying it to protect himself. I uh, don't necessarily agree with, agree with that. Actually, don't carry it because you're at risk of offending then as well. And if you've got a knife, you'll use the knife. If you haven't, you'll run away. So um, th there's an educational bit around young people, I think, but the vast majority, we're talking about the minority of people, the vast majority of the youths of Tamworth are good law-abiding kids. Uh, and we, we can tend to scope them all into one group that they're all, all, they're all bad ones. Exactly. There's always, dare I say, bad apples in every pack. And it's just, yeah. So um, so the kind of my follow-on point was about the funding streams. So I don't know if this is kind of Joe, probably potentially. There looks like there's only about a £250 increase in terms of budget for next year and the year after, or this year and the year after. Is that enough to do what we're doing? Because it doesn't look like there is... I know there's a little bit of a kind of continuation in terms of the antisocial behaviour funding and everything else looks sort of the same. It's a few hundred pounds different. So to keep going, is it enough? Or, and again, not saying that you'd say, of course you want more money, but it's that point of, can we deliver everything we want to deliver on that basis? Thanks. The funding itself comes directly via the, the, the Staffordshire Commissioner's Office. Um, they... they, they issue the locality deal funding based on population i think and sort of crime that, that they know from from uh, from all the, the assessments um there has been a move for commission crime commissioners actually some crime commissioners have removed funding to local community safety partnerships there's been a very specific um expression of interest from the sco himself that he wishes to continue local community safety partnerships and therefore fund into the localities um you know clearly if we the, the, you know the, there is always an opportunity to have more money and do things but what we are trying to do um with this money we've targeted it specifically around some of the areas of well the areas of, of priority um but we're, we're always looking for other um, op opportunities where we can assist our voluntary sector partners to to go for grant funding for specific projects that they will always come back to the, the, the partnership plans so yes that's the key core core funding there is a little bit of money that we can use within our partnership budget and obviously um staff there to, to, to do the community safety so i would class as well other things that we fund around vulnerability specifically around the advice center around other things that we fund as part of this but i've only yes included the core funding which is out of our control to some extent um, but you will notice last year the, the commissioner he did ask specifically for a further ten thousand pound to be concentrated on antisocial behavior so within the county working groups if there are other things that come up as a core priority across the county, then there will be options to have more funding pots. And there are other funding streams available through the SCO as well. Thanks, Jo, that's really, really useful. And it'd be, I dare say, really good for kind of future years, potentially to include that as well, in like really specific, specifically, to kind of say that people can look at it and go there is extra because there's an awful lot more that we know is happening it's trying to make sure people are aware of that so that's brilliant thanks jay yeah thanks no uh, thank you Catherine. yeah i mean that is something that i could consider but i mean of course it's where there are it crosses so many different reports and where the funding is for um so this i guess yes i can refer back that i, I will take that on board um but obviously this is purely for our core plan but absolutely yeah yeah i couldn't do that any other members wish to question comment no okay um i think i think from from my point of view i think in general i think i think it does show we're heading in a in a in a, in a good direction and um we have three recommendations for the report um, in that the committee note the content of the report in terms of the progress made on the community safety plan. The committee considered the draft Tamworth Community Safety Plan Partnership Plan providing any feedback that will assist the partnership to deliver on its priorities 
and that the committee support endorsement of the plan by, by Cabinet on the 27th of April for publication return to Staffordshire Commissioner's Office. Um, I'm happy to move move those recommendations on, on block. For a second there. That was a big rush that was, I think, Michelle. You just <laughs> nipped in there. Um, all those in favour? Excellent, thank you. And thank thank you, Joe, Martin, Rob and your and your team um, for, for for putting that all together. Thank you very much. You you're welcome to stay for for our other deliberations. <laughs> <laughs> I always offer that invite to, to officers and portfolio holders. It's always accepted. It's, it's, it's never accepted. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay. We'll know next time. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so uh, on to item eight which is the Staffordshire Sustainability Board update. So um, this is covering both Staffordshire Sustainability Joint Communications Plan and the Staffordshire-wide EV charging strategy, as well as suggestions for a borough-wide EV charging uh, strategy and an update on what we're doing in our borough car park. So, uh, Councillor Doyle and, and Anna, over to you. Well, thanks for good all. I think you've done the introduction for me, so there's no need for that one. So I'll leave it. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll leave Anna to carry on with the report. Thank you. Um, hi, good evening. Uh, so the purpose is to adopt uh, the Joint Staffordshire Sustainability Board Communications Plan. Um, which I'm going to call the communications plan from this point onwards, and secondly, to adopt the Staffordshire County Council Public Electric Vehicle <coughs> Charging Infrastructure Strategy, which I'm going to refer to as the EV strategy from this point onwards, um, both of which have been heard by the Staffordshire Sustainability Board. And just for information, I sit on the senior officers group which supports that board, and Councillor Doyle is the member who sits on that board. So there are four recommendations today um, to adopt both of those two strategies. And then thirdly, I'm suggesting that we have a borough-wide bespoke strategy to look in more detail at how we would, as a borough council, deliver an EV charging strategy. And then finally, looking at um, progress made on the installation of the fast charging points on uh, council car parks. So I'm going to take the communications plan um, to start with. So it was um, agreed uh, at the Joint um, Staffordshire Sustainability Board that there would be a communications plan for this year, um, accepting that uh, partner authorities can all deal with communications in their own way. Actually, it was recognised that by working together, we could have a, a coordinated and consistent approach to messaging that might reach more people across um, the Staffordshire County. So uh, a plan has been uh, set out. Um, there's a coordinated calendar of unified and consistent communications activity which will be delivered throughout the year to raise awareness principally and deepen under understanding and inspire action on climate change with our residents. So there are a number of activities uh, that are jointly planned across the county. Everything's in Appendix 1. It sets out what the proposals are in draft um, that will be run throughout the year. Um, and it's to promote national awareness days, increase residents' carbon literacy. Uh, it's about local events and launching consultation to hear what residents' views are um, and thoughts are on climate change and the barriers that they face to being greener. And I've just pulled one out in particular, which is the Carbon Bubble Roadshow. Um, this was very successfully piloted last year in Stafford Town Centre. And it's essentially, it, it's a balloon that's blown up, which represents uh, one tonne of carbon. So it's trying to give that sort of visual representation of what that looks like. Um, and then it's run also with... Um, uh, like a, a small marquee and a few officers um, running a bit of consultation alongside, asking people about 
being green and their carbon emissions, etc. And the intention is that that's going to be run um, in each district and borough across the county during the summer. And the suggested dates for the events are also in the appendix, appendix one, and they start very soon actually in May and run right the way through until the end of the summer holidays in August. Um, the suggested date for us is Wednesday the 9th, which um, I can confirm we can accommodate, although I have now been informed by Councillor Doyle that um, he put forward at the board a Tuesday, which would be better because we've got the market on, it might be a bit of a busier day. So, um, if, you know, if you're in agreement with that, what I'll do is I'll go back to county to see if they can facilitate a Tuesday instead. I don't see why not. So I will take that away as an action point. Um, so that's the carbon communications plan. Um, Chair, would you like me to stop at that point, given the... the I will, I'll, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank, yeah, thank you. Okay. Any questions or comments on that in particular? No. I think we'll, we might take this as other questions might come in yeah, sure. relative to that after, after we've heard everything. I'm just, what, how big is this balloon? It's big. And there's a, there's a, if you look in Appendix A, there's a kind of a semi scale The where the mayor sits, it's roughly about that size, uh, up to probably the top of the picture. There's some photos online for it, actually, or there should be. There's, there's, yeah, it's just there's a diagram in Appendix A just to put it into a scale. It's not yes. scaled, but it's... Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, sorry, I got so wrong. Sorry. Um, there's a, a picture in the Appendix A. Just It just scales it against the size of a person. And it, it looks it looks quite quite big. Yeah. There, up to the, um, up to the picture, gives me a nice, yeah. solid idea of what it is. Thank you. Okay, Anna. Okay, so moving on. So the, the EV charging strategy. So this is a Staffordshire County Council document. Um, it's something that they started about four years ago and then stopped work on it during COVID. So it's sort of been picked up more recently and completed. Um, they have also recently appointed an EV charging officer specifically for the delivery of this particular work stream. Um, that's been very recent, only in the last three or so months, three, four months. That officer has actually today put in their regular meetings with district and boroughs on a six weekly basis to help us and help facilitate the delivery of EV charging. So that's a really positive thing I just wanted to say, which isn't in the report. So the, the Staffordshire charging strategy has all come about simply because the government has obviously announced that petrol and diesel cars um, will no longer be for sale um, by 2030 and plug-ins by 2036. So there is a need to find an alternative source to be able to power cars. And the front runner at this point is electric vehicle charging. So it's about delivering a strategy that will allow us to have an, a network of EV charges across the county. So it's recognised that early adopters of EV charging are generally those people who have a driveway They've got off-street parking where they can plug their car in overnight and charge it whenever they want to. They don't have to find a charger or find space for a charger. So this is why having a public network of charging um, spaces is, is seen as really important because there are a lot of people who don't have a driveway at the front of their house. So um, research to support the strategy has shown that across Staffordshire, on average, 75% of households have access to off-street parking. Um, and of those households that do not, so the 25%, on average, only 3% of those have a five-minute walk to a public charging point. Now, that's an average. When you look at the figures on page nine, Tamworth doesn't fare too well. We're 71% of households that have access to off-street parking. Um, and only 0.1% of those households who do not have access and are within a five minute walk from a public charge point. And it, it, it seems quite odd to talk about walking distance when we're talking about EV charges. I think the point is, if you, if you can't um, 
charge your vehicle on your driveway, actually you want to drop it off somewhere and be able to walk home whilst it's being charged and then pop back to pick it up. So I think that's why that five minute kind of zone, if you like, is seen as a really important indicator <coughs> of accessibility to EV charging. So, I'll just scroll down. So, um, a, a draft of this strategy um, was pre presented to the board earlier this year, and they're, they're asking that districts and boroughs go through their governance to adopt it as well. So the strategy sets out priorities for the installation of EV charging across the county, and it's looked at various different data sets, urban versus rural, um, charging capabilities and capacity, etc., and likelihood of those people who are, you know, likely to adopt an EV charging, uh, I was going to say strategy, have an EV charging car. Um, so across the county, it's starting to show what those priority areas are and points of interest where a strategy should prioritise and focus. Um, it also looks at Tamworth more specifically. So on page 39, there's analysis of Tamworth of likely demand across our borough and where there are points of interest. So uh, public car parks or it might be... Um, petrol station forecourts, that sort of thing, um, that could form part of a strategy for delivering EV charging. So what I would say is that it is a really useful document, and I think, I think what the County Council will do is use the strategy to um, bid for funding from government. There is quite a bit of funding available at the moment for EV charging, and it's mostly aligned to the um, local transport authorities, which obviously that sits with county. So this strategy will be used to bring in money, which will then, we hope, cascade down to the districts and boroughs for us to then deliver where we can. So whilst it's really good, and it gives us a really good starting point, I don't think it actually tells us what we might need to do as an authority, which is why I'm suggesting in recommendation three that we, for not very much cost, but just add to this document and have a bespoke Tamworth EV strategy so that if, say, tomorrow we were faced with the, the great kind of, you know, it would be great, wouldn't it, if we had £50,000 given to us by county, having been successful in a bid, we could then deliver at pace, knowing exactly what it was that we wanted to do. Um, lots of decisions, I think, around what our priorities in Tamworth would be for such a strategy. So that's it from me on that one. Thank you, Chair. Thank, thanks, Anna. Um, I, I probably have a few comments to make on this because it's something I've, I've, I've been hammering on in, in scrutiny for more years than I can, I can remember. In fact... I took recommendations to Cabinet back in 2017 from this committee. I took other recommendations in 2019 and also in 2020. In 2019, there was a recommendation that went to Cabinet that an action plan was developed. And it kind of feels a bit disappointing that we're, we're now in 2023 and still we're talking about it and not doing anything. And I'm looking around the room and everybody on this committee is agreeing with me. And just, just, just a second. Can I, I know, just literally, just to say, when you say 2017, I took something in 2012 to Cabinet. That's how long. It's 11 years ago. It's appalling. So I do worry how, how many more years we're going to be talking about it. And... I, I know the whole concern that, well, if you're an early adopter, you might choose the wrong, the wrong um, means to charge or the, or the wrong route to take. But, and, I, and I appreciate that. However, at some point, you have to, you have to make a decision, and, and any decision is better than no decision at all. And, and, and I, we've, we've seen that we are... We are behind, and 
it it just worries me. So that's more of a comment rather than a <laughs> than a question because I don't have the authority to, 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 to come up with those sort of answers. But I took a report to Cabinet back in twenty nineteen and it just it just seems a shame uh, that we're still talking about it. So that's all I've got to say at the moment. Any any other members got anything else to, to add at the, just at the moment? Sheree. Not to add, just to back up what you've said, we've been talking about this for so long. And I mean, you, I think you said um, by 2030, there will be no further petrol or diesel cars sold. Well, that's seven years, less than seven years. That's not long. Um, so we've got a very nice, you know, shiny report from Amy, um, but, you know, we need some action, don't we? And that's no criticism of you, no, Anna, no. or anybody else. It's simply, you know, we've got to stop talking about it and start doing it. Yeah. Yeah, Anna. Yeah, I don't, I don't disagree. But what I, what I will say, just to provide some context, is that Warwickshire County Council have recently, having de um, delivered themselves um, an EV strategy, <coughs> they have bid for money and have been very successful and have pulled in you know, hundreds of thousands of pounds to deliver across Warwickshire. And I think that's what's needed across Staffordshire. And I think this will do something. I do very much feel, though, that this strategy does place the onus on the districts and boroughs to do the delivering, even though we're not the highways authority. The strategy very much sticks to public car parks, land owned by public bodies, whether that's a council or somebody else, or us negotiating with the private sector to get them to do the delivery. So whether that's on forecourts or whether it's in journey, um, charging like at a service station, etc. So this strategy is very much designed for us to do the delivering. So I really hope that, that this strategy um, does provide the funding to allow us to do it. Thanks, Anne. Cool. Yeah. Uh, thanks for that. I mean, it does look quite comprehensive, but again, you know, I concur with what these have been saying. Action is speaking louder than words. And if the funding doesn't come, what's our plan? Do we have one? <laughs> I mean, we would have to ourselves look for funding at this point, um, but we're not a highways, we're not the transport authority, which is why the Staffordshire strategy gives us a much better opportunity to draw, to draw down government funding. Um, the, I won't move on to it, but the next section, which talks about delivering fast charging in Tamworth, that, that model that we've adopted there doesn't cost us anything but is clearly causing us problems because <laughs> it's not coming forwards very quickly. So there are no cost options, mm -hmm. um, but that won't necessarily solve the problem of delivering a strategy. Yeah, that's so, strategies. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Anna. Um, I know Michelle's waiting. I just want to make another point or, or ask a question. Um, why... Why has it taken this long? And this is probably one for Steve, actually, as, as, a, as a portfolio holder. Um, why has it taken so long for us to start looking at a strategy? I'll be honest, I've not had it for 11 years, and uh, I didn't have it in 2017 either. But I know this has been a passion of yours. Um, it took a while to mature. Uh, I mean, originally when electric, electric cars were available, you had three different chargers. Now there's only one. Um, I'll be honest, there's an awful lot that I know about electric cars, but because of my job, I can't tell you. <laughs> there is a huge change coming to the car industry and the way that people use cars. We are literally about five years off a really big step, step in change in the way that people move. Uh, I mean, you'll have to take my word for that because I can't actually give you any more detail, but it is exciting. Uh, from the council's point of view, we've always had to balance need against funding. Uh, the number of electric vehicles is growing, uh, but it's still not. Uh, we have to couple it with the funding that we've got, 
or confined to provide those charging points. So that has largely held back uh, them appearing all over Tamworth. Um, we aren't the only area that's got this, uh, the problem, um, but we are working now with partners uh, throughout Staffordshire to look to speed that up. I mean, the fact that you've got this report here and we've actually got some dates and that actually shows that we are moving in the right direction. You say that uh, 2030 is not that far off. Yes, I agree. Um, but there are some important changes that are coming before then that will change this completely. So. Okay, th thanks, Steve. Yeah, and and we, we, we could... I totally get we could we could discuss all night about different different routes and technologies it's been five years five years since uh, and you know not dismissing what michelle took that was before my time but five years since i first brought to cabinet and uh, made recommendations and we're only seven years away from the petrol and diesel cars not being manufactured we we that's a significant that's a significant portion of time that i don't believe anything's happened and that's not a criticism of you it's a criticism of or some constructive criticism of um maybe the uh, the system we're working in but it's certainly it's something that needs to we need to be better at. I actually agree with you. Um, if we were working in private industry, it wouldn't have took this long. Mm. But unfortunately, um, in the public sector, things seem to take longer. There's many a thing that I would like to have seen go through quicker. Uh, one of the things that will really impact the car industry is AI. I mean, we're already seeing Tesla cars that have the ability, although it's questionable when it's put into execution. But when that actually is perfected and works, it'll change the way that you can charge a vehicle. Because no longer will you need to have it outside your house to charge it. The, the car will be able to take itself off in the early hours of the morning to a charging station and do it itself. Those are the sorts of plans that are, uh, that are coming to fruition. Um, Steve, just just quickly. I'm going off on one there. So you, you are going off on one a little bit, and um, but I I get it. Um, the legislation to allow cars moving about without a driver in them, we're we're so many years away from in all the legislation that they would have to go through to make that happen. We, we can't even put a strategy together in five years. Central <laughs> government are not going to agree on a set of rules to allow cars to drive around themselves without a driver in them for another 15 years at least. Um, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll stop at that point because yeah. I don't believe we're, we're probably going off the point a little bit. Yeah, it's a discussion point, for the pub, I think. It, my, well, it's, it's a discussion for another time. The point is we're five years in nothing's happened and that's a concern um i'll come back on another point on that um i was at the sustainability partnership partnership on monday mm. and on the way there there was um, the un had released its report and we've actually failed to hit the target of reducing or keeping emissions and that below uh, a temperature increase of 1.5 centigrade right so it's um as somebody once said to me it's like a uh, was it ch uh, change can was it change can be forced sometimes due to in circumstances and this is where we're going to be climate change is now coming um, it's already here to be honest to a large extent across the planet so it's we will have to get better we will have to find ways to try and reverse the damage we've done it's not a case of can we do this or should we do this it will be we have to do it so we will have to get better and yes, this, uh, it's what you call it, we shouldn't still be now discussing, oh, we're going to put some in over there. They should already be there and there should be others coming. So I don't dispute that one. Okay, thank, thank right. you. Any other questions or comments? Just to the, uh, Michelle, sorry, yeah. 
Thanks. Um, yeah, I suppose, I mean, I, first of all, thank you for letting me have my mini interruption at the beginning. But I mean, when I was vice chair of what this committee was back in, I think it was 2012, I led a report on a working group that was to look at electric vehicle charging points. At the time, I was at Birmingham Airport, I was leading our transport department, and it was something that they, at the time, were introducing electric vehicle charging points. I came with all enthusiasm to what was this committee to say, Tamworth can do this, it's coming, the technology's coming. And it's actually kind of heartbreaking, and I know I was sitting on Carpenet, and Steve, you were as well, at the time but it's heartbreaking sitting here now looking all this time later and there's one two three four five five different locations within the borough that there are currently public electric vehicle charging points one is on new housing estates the other four are all on private businesses including ventura we've sat in scrutiny committees for quite a while talking about how we improve the town center how we get people to downstate use it as well as Ventura. Most of the charging points are either on Ventura or at the Snow Dome. They're not outside our assembly rooms. They're not in the town centre. Public car parts that we have ownership of, that we could put the resources in, we could do it. And we keep sitting here talking about climate change is important, climate change is important. Let's wait till kind of the end of 2024 before we see a strategy. This is something we could go and put the money in today and go and not put a report out to say, oh, let's have some more time to look at it. We could go and put a report out to actually commission charging points. A little bit of a tip, because I didn't know this until not that long ago, randomly. If you see a car with a green strip on the registration plate, that's an electric vehicle. Well, next time you're in your car driving around, just count how many you see. And it wasn't that long ago, you'd hardly see any. Now you're seeing loads. And once you start noticing them, you'll see them everywhere. They are out and about, and those people will be looking where they can go to travel, where they can go shopping, where they can visit, purely based on where their journeys are. And we will be missing out as a town every single day that we wait. Or people will go to Asda, or not after Aldi, or go to Sainsbury's to go and charge up their vehicle. They will not be walking around our town centre. They will go to Solihull or Litchfield or places where there are electric vehicle charging points. So absolutely support the recommendations, but we need to be doing significantly more and not beating around the bush, <laughs> saying, oh, look, we're doing this, we're doing that. We need to get on and do it. And my, my ask back to the committee and obviously by yourself Anna and obviously Steve in your kind of role is to be saying bring something back that says we are doing this put the report in to actually say at least in terms of the assembly rooms and the main car parks put the commitment in and put your money where your mouth is ultimately thank you Thank, thanks Michelle and yeah it, it just echoes Go for it. Sorry, yeah. Actually, something else I, that's actually probably a useful comment. I also do quite a bit of work through a third party with WPD and National Grid. WPD are doing huge amounts as our energy distributor that they have annual conferences and monthly conferences and never once since I've been involved with them have I seen anyone from Tamworth there or Litchfields or Staffordshire for that matter. They don't go and talk about it. They want to know how they inform their electricity plans, which start again in a couple of years. And likewise, National Grid are working for every single street lamp to be able to plug in electric vehicles. It's happening now, and they want to talk to authorities. So that's the other thing. Get, the, get people on that distribution list to go and talk about it. And the fact we're not the transport authority doesn't change the fact that we still have a significant amount of street lamps that we could start doing stuff like that with. Thank, Thank thanks, you. Michelle. Yeah, I mean, I think I recall one of my recommendations that went to Cabinet at one of these particular years, which I can't quite be certain of, was that the, the local plan 
our, our own local plan had reference to EV charging points and encompassed some some work in that area. And again, it's disappointing that I think that that has Anna. Uh, I mean, the local plan was adopted in 2016, um, and and it's it's due for renewal now. And we've started that process with our issues and options consultation. Um, climate change is going to be central in that plan. It's going to be for lots of different reasons: biodiversity, um, uh, it, it, flooding, um, building by design. All all of those things will be ramped up much more in the reviewed local plan. Definitely. Um, I have previously worked in authorities where, for example, my last authority, all major developments for housing, 10% had to have electric vehicle charging points. Um, you've got to get it into your policies to be able to apply it, yeah. and that's where we're, we're, we're just in that gap where we, we can't quite do it. Um, but there are lots of authorities who are doing things like that, so I think absolutely that's something that would come forwards in some form. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Um, John. Uh, yeah, just very briefly, just to um, say how I absolutely agree with Michelle. Um, I had no idea, really, that we were so far behind the um, the mark on this and that we've been talking about it for so long. I didn't realise that, uh, that it goes back so far. Um, it's going to happen. We know it's going to happen. So let's be at the vanguard of this and make some concerted efforts to get this this done so that we're... We're at the forefront of, of, of implementing this. Um, uh, indeed, if we do, as, as Michelle said, uh, get our car parks fitted with these um, points, it'll be an attraction to our town centre and uh, people will be coming here because of it. Um, I should um, perhaps just say one word of caution. Way back in the day, I was the man who asked someone, um, what's the difference? VHS or Betamax, which is the system? What's the one? Now I was told 100% Betamax. That's the way forward. That's where it's going to go. So perhaps I, I shouldn't be taking too much notice of. I know I'm going back a lot. I do go back a long way. But come on, we need to get this. We need to get this on. Uh, Thank, thanks, up John. And going. My view is, doesn't matter which way you choose, make a decision. That's 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 my view on it all, Anna. And, and I think having, um, in line with recommendation three, a bespoke plan for Tamworth means that we can, if we have the funding, deliver at pace, which I think if we were handed that funding tomorrow, we would we would not have those priorities in place that would allow us to do that, which is why I think that recommendation is, is really worthwhile. Thanks, thanks Anna. Michelle. Thanks, Anna. Just a quick question. Um, with the um, recommendation for the report, how fast would we actually see a report? Um, so the budget is there. It's just a, a question of commissioning it. I think I would get someone in the regen team to to do that. Um, th that's a good question. Maybe a draft by the end of the year or something. Where are we now? April. That's entirely possible. Th thanks, Anna. Um, I was ahead of you on this one, actually, Michelle, because I think it's, it would potentially be a useful recommendation from this committee based on what we feel about it to, to, to perhaps put something together to say to Cabinet, you, you really need this by the end of the year. You need it finished by the end of the year rather than just a draft. That's where I would be going. But we'll think, we'll think about that as we, as we move on. I mean, it probably does move us quite nicely on to... The, the, the car park and the next point on the... I'm not sure the messaging gets any better, to be perfectly honest. Um, obviously, following on for the numerous committees, uh, like you set out in the timetable that's been quite extended, um, the Regen team were tasked with delivering one fast charging bay in a car park, which then, through discussions um, with the Regen board, became four fast charging sort of opportunities in car parks. Um, and we did move very quickly and signed an agreement with BP Pulse, um, uh, which was signed in December 21. And that was a hosting agreement for seven years, which basically they bear all the costs of surveys, the research, the installation, 
um, the maintenance, everything that's ongoing, all we do really is provide the space on the car park. Despite that, um, we we didn't hear a lot from them last year. Um, they just disappeared um, despite numerously trying to get back in touch with them to deliver on the car parks. We had really detailed conversations. We knew we wanted two spaces in on River Drive, two spaces on Bullbridge. We even had shared plans with them of which spaces exactly where in the car park. And they went away to do basically their due di diligence to ensure that they could get the charges there, that they could be, there was capacity in the system, that they could be connected correctly. And it all went very, very quiet. Um, we understand that they've been through quite a big structural change as an organisation, and it's been quite challenging to get to the person who is making the decisions and helping us. But we have now managed it, and towards the end of last year, we now, um, with a invest new, new investment manager, we have started to pick up conversations again. And it was around two on River Drive and two on Bullbridge. Um, what they came back with and I've, I've um, attached a picture to the report because I, I didn't want to have to describe it in the report because it's too much to describe. And I thought the picture was a much better way of doing it. But they actually, they don't want Bullbridge now. They want to put everything on River Drive and they want a charging hub, a much bigger, a much bigger sort of facility with 12 bays, six fast charges, with two connections on each. Um, something that could charge very quickly, ultra, perhaps in the space of 15 minutes, so have high turnover. Uh, River Drive is their preferred location in Tamworth. Um, and as you know, with these commercial operators, they are looking for commercial <laughs> locations, which again is why a bespoke strategy is important to us, because we are not necessarily thinking commercially. We've got lots of residents to take care of as well. Now, you wouldn't get a residential strategy from someone, someone like this necessarily. So they're very now keen on River Drive for a much bigger proposition. Um, we've gone back very positively to say, yes, please. Um, we have to now go through the due diligence all over again. And we ne they need their um, financial approvals, their investment approvals. So they've clearly got a process which they have to move through before finally saying, can we do it? I would really like to be able to sit here today with a time scale and I cannot do that. I wouldn't, given how long it's already taken to get back to a point where we're almost starting again, but with a different proposition. So we are still trying our best to deliver fast charges on our car parks, um, but it's out of our control because we're not actually doing the delivery and we're very beholden to how they quickly they can move forwards but it is moving forwards and what they are proposing is much better for Tamworth because it's it's way more than we were anticipating um, I'm happy to take questions thank you uh, thanks thanks Anna yeah I mean I'm gonna kick off again because it is I've, I've, I've been looking at this for so many years uh, waiting will always provide a better result in these sort of in fast changing sort of you know, we'll, we'll always find a better a better result and easily justifiable but we can't just keep waiting that's that's the point we can't just keep waiting and i, I'm, I feel I'm, I'm i'm starting to sound like councillor harper with his passion for for different things and it's not that often i get so passionate about certain subjects but I really, we just need to get on and, 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 and do something. We, we can keep waiting, and we'll keep waiting, and we'll, we'll, there'll be people that will say, yeah, we've, uh, it's a good job we waited, because we've, that would have been a bad decision. And, and I think that's, that's something that you, can be justified. It can be justified, it's not right, though. Um, and I'll, I'll finish there for the moment, wittering on. Uh, sorry, Paul. Paul. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> yeah, reading this report, I mean, my concern is that you've only put all your eggs in one basket and you're looking at BP, one provider. Why aren't we looking at two, three, four providers as a fallback? Because if these come back now, and when they do their due diligence with Western Power and whoever, and they find that the, <clears throat> the, the supply of the power isn't enough, 
or there's another reason why the costs go through the roof or a reason they fail or don't deliver, why have we just got our eggs in one basket? I think in response yeah, sorry, in response to that, um, we've just followed the directions that we've had coming through the various committees. Um, and we were asked to look at an SPO procurement framework and to secure a supplier and an operator. Mm. And initially it was only for one charging unit, which then became four. Um, so we did that. We, we went ahead and after looking at all the different options, we went with BP Pulse, not knowing at the time that we would then have quite a long wait to deliver the four, which hasn't happened. And now we're going to have to wait again to deliver the 12. And, and we know. hadn't foreseen that. You know, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have known that mm. when we started no, no, the journey. Not no, no, no. Um, so, th so that's why, um, that's why it, we are where we are. Yeah, it just worried yeah. me that we, you know, we're still now waiting on one provider to give us a solution. That's not a strategy. That's a, that's a bit of a panic move, isn't it, really? And I, th I think when it comes to strategy, that's what the strategy will do for recommendation three. It will give us an overview of where we want to go, what we want to deliver, in which locations, which means that we could go to more suppliers to do that. But because we've only been tasked with doing what we are doing now, which is our four, we've just followed the one supplier route, which was what we were asked to do. But I think a strategy um, gives us the opportunity to, to do multiple things because we'll know what, what it is. And, and if we were to receive funding, well, clearly we couldn't have all our eggs in one basket because we would want to deliver quickly. Mm -hmm. So in that case, we probably would want to look a little bit more widely at, at what we were doing. Thank, thanks, Anna. Shuri. Apologies if this is somewhere in the report and I haven't seen it. How much does a charging point bay cost? I actually don't know because with this particular model, oh sorry, I don't know because with this model we don't have any costs at all. It's all delivered by BP Pulse. Um, there are other models which where we could install ourselves um, and take the cost and take the maintenance and all, all the rest that goes with it, um, but also probably take the revenue as well. Um, but that hasn't been explored at this point. It's just the no-cost model that's been explored. Thank you. I'm just interested because, um, as some of you know, we spend a lot of time in France, and the, uh, the village or the small town nearest to where we have our property, 5,000 inhabitants, two charging bays in the public car park, which can only have been funded by the commune because that's the way things work. So I'm just thinking that if they're not all that expensive then maybe that's something that we should be looking at whether we could install them ourselves take the maintenance on board and as you say take the revenue i'm going to say it again i'm going to sound like a broken record but if we have our own strategy that strategy will look at um you know off street opportunities in residential areas now these commercial providers are unlikely to be interested in those areas because it, it won't have the same uh, numbers perhaps or turnover on those spaces so that might be a good reason to have a different model for delivering those particular types and i think that's why we need a strategy is to tease out all those issues like mm -hmm. you say the cost how we might fund it um, and and look after it long term but i think when we when we go to the residential side i think probably it's more likely that we would need more control over it to do it Thanks, thanks, Anna. Um, not wanting to sound like a broken record myself, the strategy should have been done a few years ago when it was first recommended to Cabinet from scrutiny and agreed that it would be done. However, I will move on. Michelle. Thanks. Just to come back on Councillor Peoples points about the costings. So if you look at National Grid's um, electric vehicle charging point, um, reports that they've got for um, a public charging location you're looking at an approximate connection lead time of 16 weeks and a cost of somewhere between 70 and 120,000 pounds if the grid needs to be enhanced at that particular location you're looking between 60,000 and 2 million 
So that's that's the the costing. So it is a lot. So the no cost options are actually really beneficial because someone else makes the charge. But part of it is understanding is the grid there, and the quickest way of doing that is asking the grid with a simple proposal of we are looking at putting X number of rapid or ultra rapid points in or slow or whatever it happens to be, do you have the connectivity on the grid? If the answer is yes, if you're looking at kind of an on street or side kind of public location, <coughs> you can get an agreement within 12 weeks and it can be three and a half thousand pounds. So actually it's not that complicated if you know what type you're looking for and what you're doing. So actually, kind of the commentary about what we said about recommendations to Cabinet, I would be suggesting that we could even, with a relatively simple proposal, i.e. a fast charging point in this location, you could get an answer within three months. I know that's not part of the strategy, but you could ask at least the question. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Michelle. Shuri. This is coming back on a slightly different point, but just to reiterate something you said previously, Anna, uh, in terms of if it's not in your policy, you can't do it. So that's clearly something that we need to be thinking about in terms of planning policies um, and requirements for charging points on residential developments. I'm sure you've got that in hand, but uh, it's definitely something that we need to be mindful of. Thank you. Anna, do you do you have a further a further comment to make, or you? <laughs> I'm all out of comments. You're all out of comments. <laughs> okay. Um, I I look I look at the the, the recommendations as far as uh, I think the recommendation one the, the the communication plan. I'm I'm personally happy with that. Um, I think number two, I think I'm happy with that. I think number three, I'm happy with that, but it should have already been done and has already has already been recommended some years ago. Um, so that needs. I'm going I'm to add some further. Well, I'd like to add some further ones in. Um, and number four, that the the uh, the update is endorsed. I think you've given us an update on that. I'd like to add that the strategy is completed by the end of 2023. Um, I think I think that should be well within the bounds of, of getting that that done. I I think it's as I say, it's. <laughs> It's sort of four, four or five years sort of behind. So I think, it's, as far as I'm concerned, I think that, that that's a, a fair timeline. And I think, we sh I think we should make a recommendation to Cabinet that there is a timeline. Um, and also that the, the EV, the installation of the charging points is treated as a Cabinet priority because I think I don't know how we firm that up a little bit more, or if if anybody has any uh, any thoughts on that. But um, because I don't think it has been. Um, committee, any comments? Michelle. Um. Yeah. I mean, I I completely agree with you on that. I I wouldn't necessarily change anything. I would. The only thing I would potentially say is that it's ready to a point of being able to kind of come back to this committee in mm. advance of, I'll say, the December Cabinet, yeah. where then recommendations are actually proceeding with a proposal by then. Because that would, that would be end of November, well, middle of November to get a report together to do something to fit in, or at least January is an absolute worst case. Yeah. And also looking as part of the wider climate change agenda i know at the moment the transport isn't really focused that much within that document actually incorporating electric vehicles on a, as part of that proposal because it, it is a transport is still one of the biggest areas of carbon emissions 
and at the moment we're not really looking at it outside the scope of the very narrow transport that TBC operate and actually I think we've got a bigger responsibility to look at residents and I know that's not all within our grasp but partly i.e HRA estates it certainly is and that's something that we should be looking at leading the way on. Thanks, thanks Michelle. Anna, you, uh, you, you wanted to was it on the um, the strategy completion date, maybe? Yes, thank you. Yeah, only to say, um, if we get to draft stage, would you not want that to come back for discussion prior to? I think. I think. Cabinet? Yeah, I think that's but kind of what Michelle was alluding to. That might really, just add that, a bit of time. That, but yeah, yeah. That, that we that it comes back to the committee once you've got that that draft report, but before the end of the year. Yeah, uh, I think I was in, in my head, even though I'm not writing this tender, but in my head, I think actually to, to deliver the strategy, there would probably need to be quite a bit of member engagement and workshopping around mm. it. Um, so I think there would be quite a bit of engagement prior to a draft, prior to sign off, I think. Um. Yeah, potentially. Yeah. Uh, I'm still comfortable. Uh, personally, I'm still comfortable in in challenging cabinet to to make it happen. That's that's what I would. That's where I'm going at the moment. Right. That's needed. And cab cab cabinet can uh, can will 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 have their their say on it. Okay. That's that's where that's where I'm coming from, really, Paul. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Yeah, I mean, I, I look at it and I think it's a massive piece of work to do in a year, to be perfectly honest, with the resources that you've got at the moment and all the other jobs on your list. Um, one thing that, you know, I'd like to propose is that there is actually a quarterly update to this committee saying, where are, where, what have we achieved per quarter and are we aspiring to, to that? I also think that we've got to look at um, responsibility and ownership and particularly at cabinet level, of saying this is a really serious uh, problem that we've left it to uh, meander for so long and now we're playing catch up mm -hmm. and I think that ownership and the priority it's got to be bumped up to pretty much the top level now mm -hmm. we can't let it slip any longer so I think a review of who takes charge of it who delivers it when they deliver it and a, a constant feedback per quarter of the progress we've made is, is, is I would recommend that to we look at putting that sort of plan in place for this committee. I would just just before you come in, Anna, I, I would I would probably say updates, but after we've we've got that draft, because yeah. I think I think that's the appropriate time to have any any updates myself. Yeah, the draft should. Mm. Um, I, I was just going to say yes, there is a lot of work on, <laughs> and it falls to the region team again, where there is a lot of work. Um, However, I wasn't assigning a big budget to this. Um, I don't see it as a big piece of work. This is just trying to capture what the county have done. And they have done a good job at a strategic level, but now it's just trying to find those priorities for us as an authority. Is it car parks? Regen, yeah, would, where Regen would, would deliver on that. Or is it other TBC-owned land? Who would deliver that? And, and which spots? And what the business model is, I don't necessarily feel that it's a really big piece of work. It just needs to be a little bit more detailed than what we've got for the money. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. if if I was putting a hundred thousand to it, it's I would say money. that's a, that's a good twelve month piece of work. But I'm only putting so what, what about ten to it. So what's the plan for the TBC fleet? I mean, I'm assuming that they're converting to green as we speak, and if you can't charge them up, what's the point? Yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not responsible for the TBC fleet. I do know that they do have, I think it's five electric vehicles on order. There's a delay in all vehicles at the moment from new to being delivered. Um, so I do know that they've got some on order, which I think are due to be delivered in the autumn. Obviously, to facilitate those vehicles, they will need an EV charging point at the depot. Um, I have spoken with Mark Greaves on that, and it's left with him to, to actually deliver that. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Anna. Steve, do you want to come in? Yeah, it's actually seven vehicles. So seven? Yeah, I've got the. Thank you. One other point, uh, just what Paul raised about uh, the priority level. Uh, the last time electric vehicles was brought to scrutiny with yourselves, wasn't it Jeremy and Rob? 
the leader and the deputy leader. Uh, it's what? It's, it's, Electric it's, vehicle, uh, car parking. It's, it's always been with this committee. Yeah, I know it's been with you, but the last people that represented it from the cabinet oh. perspective was uh, Rob and Jeremy. Yeah, Rob's never been to a scrutiny meeting. Um, yeah, so he, he was sat there. Yeah, well, I can't remember. It certainly, was, certainly wasn't while I was, um, I, I, I was chairing the meeting anyway. Um, and it, it kind of is irrelevant, really. Um, it's, it's, um, it's something I've brought to Cabinet numerous times, and uh, Cabinet is a collective. Um, pardon? Sorry, carry on. Sorry, I thought it was an interesting term, that's all. What? Collective. Well, it's true. Um, so, getting back to business, we've got the four recommendations and the two additional ones. It, is committee com comfortable with, with those, yeah. those challenges? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I'm happy to move them. I'll second it. Paul, <laughs> all those in favour? Thank you very much. Um, thanks, Anna, Steve. For, for your attendance. Uh, Steve, are you, you staying around for the next item or you, you, you don't have to? Being that you've asked so nicely, I will. Appreciate it. Thank you. Anna, you're, you're, you can leave if you so wish. Um, okay, we'll move on to, uh, it's half past seven now. We'll move on to the forward plan, which is item nine. Um, I don't believe there's anything on the forward plan that we, we need to look at. Certainly, we've, we've only got one more meeting now um, um, on, the, on the list for this year. So um, I'm sure we will look at the committee work plan and uh, any, any other items at that appropriate time. Um, item 10, our working group updates. Two items. The um, Ben, I don't know if you've got anything on the... HGV drivers facilities. Um, first of all, apologies for my lateness, Chair. I have text you to explain, so apologies for that. Um, yeah, no, no update at the minute. We are still working um, through what we proposed to committee um, a few months ago. Um, so hopefully, uh, we should have an update, if not for the next meeting, um, the, the following meeting. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then the other one was travellers, which we. Um, not going to go into too much detail at the moment. That's still something ongoing and, and will be looked at from a, a joint scrutiny point of perspective. But we did, um, members were invited to a, a seminar, which I think most of us went to, and I think, I think that was very useful. Um, item 11 is our committee work plan. Um, Again, I don't want to sort of dwell too much on this. I think it's something we can we can review at the next meeting. Um, other than, yeah, we do have another meeting and we've got the um, festival stuff coming and maybe at that point we'll have a little bit of a review and, and, and perhaps have some ideas for, uh, for next year, whoever may be on the committee. Um, so item... 12, which is exclusion of the press and public. Um, so that in accordance with the provisions of the local authorities' executive arrangements, meeting and access to information, England regulations, 2012 and section 100A, part 4 of the Local Government Act, 1972, the press and public be excluded from the meeting during the consideration of the following business, the grounds that involves the likely disclosure of exempt information, as defined in paragraph 3 of part 1 of the schedule 12A to the Act and the public interest in withholding the information outweighs the public interest in disclosing the information to the public. I'm happy to move that. Do I have a seconder? Ben, thank you very much. All those in favour? Thank you very much. Um, thanks everybody uh, from public that's been, been watching and the recording will now cease.